Are you familiar with playing on the backbeat? It's a very effective guitar part, but you know what's interesting? The more that I play guitar, the more I realize that there's these little nuances that you can do, even to a simple guitar part like this, to make it sound a little bit different. Listen to these two examples and see if you can hear the subtle difference between the two. It's the same guitar part, but I'm playing them slightly differently. In those two examples, I was playing on the backbeat, but I was doing it in a slightly different way. First of all, let's talk about though, what does it mean to play on the backbeat? This is a very classic rhythm guitar move that you would hear a lot of times in Motown and R&B music. You're adding basically a little bit of a, a chug on beats two and four. That's the backbeat. That's what they consider the backbeat. So usually when you're playing drums, you'll hear on the one the bass drum, boom, and then the snare, crack, on two. And you'll also hear then the bass on three, and the snare again, crack, on four. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And the backbeat adds a lot of excitement, especially when you emphasize it with a little bit of a guitar stab. So it's important if you're just getting started doing this, to practice, first of all, without your guitar, and just sing along to the beats. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And again, you're listening for that snare, that big crack. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And you notice what I was doing there when I was counting. I was also overemphasizing that number. So in my brain, I'm training myself to hear one, two, three, four, one, two. So it's really standing out to me. Once you have that down, practice your picking hand to play on those downbeats. And in this case here, I'm basically playing a D chord, but I'm only playing the top half here, these strings, from the G string, B string, and E string. So this is that top part of the chord. And that's a basic triad. We have D, F sharp and A. And I'm just doing stabs. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And you'll notice I'm doing the first way with all down strokes. One, two, three, four. So let's play along with that and count along too when you do this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. And you'll notice when you hear, not when you hear, when, when I was listening to the music starting, you'll notice I'm kind of ramping up my hand to get it in rhythm ready. One, two, three, and then I come down. One, two, three, four, one. So I was overemphasizing it there, but I just wanted to show you, you can kind of get your motor going before the actual time to play happens. So that was the first way I was playing on the backbeats. I was using downstrokes. But there's so much nuance that you can do with the guitar that you can actually play these on the upstroke. And why would you do that? Well, if you listen closely here, when you're playing it this way, your lower notes happen first. If I'm playing up, I actually have the higher notes, obviously, happening first. And to me, it adds a little more punch. 
you can hear it's a little brighter on the attack. It's very subtle, I know, but experiment with this. It's nice to be able to play it both ways. Now, the tricky part with this is, though, you're kind of training your hand to come up on the two and the four. So let's go ahead and give this a try. Nothing is really changing per se. We're playing still on beats two and four, but instead of the downstroke, we're gonna try an upstroke. And what you'll see I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna get my motor going by going one and then play up on the two, down on the three, up on the four. And I'm only gonna play on the upstrokes. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And if you also notice what I'm doing with my fretting hand, I don't have it down all the time. I'm only putting it down when I'm going to strike the chord. And I do that in both going the downstroke and then the upstroke. And this way you're kind of mutiny, muting the strings and deadening them so it's really just having that punch and then you're out. So it makes it very staccato sounding, which is the sound you want when you're playing this type of rhythm part. So let's give it a try and count along if you can. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. So as you can see here, it's a very subtle change, but it does sound a little bit different, at least to my ears. It sounds a little more punchier. But practice it both ways. Practice it both with the downstroke and also with the upstroke when you're doing your stabs on the backbeats. It's a really fun rhythm part to play. It's a simple part to play, yet it's challenging. You really gotta try to lock in with that snare drum. So make sure this is a great learning exercise to make sure that you're listening to the drums and you're not just kind of just playing along. Lots of times as guitarists, sometimes we're just guilty of listening to ourselves and we're not listening to the rest of the band play. It's very important to try to lock yourself in to the drums. And in order to do that, don't be afraid to first start again with just listening to the drums and counting. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. 